Hey, and welcome to Schmooze with Suze. I'm Suze Montgomery, and got an old friend here. He's not really old, but I am. But uh, old friend Roger, Roger Thompson's with me today, and he just finished his second book. And I don't know if you remember, but I definitely do. The first book he wrote was, uh, and he came on our show with it, which was My Best Friend's Funeral, which was a story that he wrote, autobiographical, about uh, one of our friends, Tim. And wow, I haven't seen you much. Oh, I see you at Palermo's from time to mm -hmm. time. I'm still down there with the dissidents every Saturday <laughs> morning, creating trouble. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your second book, and then we'll circle back to the first one, too. Great. So the second one you just published? Yeah, it just came out uh, right before summer. We stood up on stars, um, and I started writing shortly after the first book, and then, you know, obviously picked up some speed, uh, steam with it, and. Yeah, so it's just been out for a few months now. Where'd you get the title? The title comes from one of the chapters, and it's a, um, the, the book itself is a bit of an adventure, travel adventure book, a narrative of some of my travels in the West, and there's a chapter ta also titled, which says my stars, but it's about being in um, Rocky Mountain National Park, and I was backpacking with a friend of mine, and at elevation where the stars didn't seem like they were above us any longer, but we were kind of amongst them. Um, and it just kind of always struck me, that image it always stuck with me. And so it kind of came out in the writing and ended up going, being the title of the book. We were talking off camera and I asked Raj, I sat there and I go, I was asking him about being a student in school and he really never knew you had the creative ability. No, I, especially with writing, um, I was an okay student just like most kids, just didn't apply myself perhaps. Um, and there are moments in time that, looking back, where I've, where writing kind of surfaced up. But yeah, it never really was a thing in my life. Um, and it wasn't until I was in my late 30s when I started writing my best friend's funeral that that was the first thing I'd ever written. Um, and it turned into a book and got lucky and it got published. And, and now into the second and there's more in the future and it's now that's what I do. You found your niche. Yeah, it's nice to have found that at this stage of life, and it's been a real gift. I don't think it's ever too late. Uh, it's not late. It's, in fact, I, don't, I couldn't imagine have done it earlier, because you need, yeah. for the stuff I'm writing, you need a certain amount of life experience to have accumulated. And to discipline. Build right, and discipline, and the things that kind of come, come with being at this stage in life. Do you write every day? Most days I write. I Does it other... just flow, or do you have a creative process you go through? Oh, no. I mean, sometimes it's terrifying and terrible um, and so but the the discipline is just to show up and let the work um, kind of do its thing you know you show up I love the if you've read any of Elizabeth Gilbert stuff but she has this great thing where she writes about as a writer your job is to show up and there's this other thing out there that you know does its job or it doesn't job its job but as long as you show up that's the part of being a writer um, and so that's what I do. I show up in the morning and I write. And this morning was agonizing. Yesterday was great, you know, and I'm sure tomorrow will be something in between. But yeah, that's the work of, I think, any artist is becomes more disciplined and, um, and less waiting for something to strike. Artist. Okay, let's talk about that because that involves a certain amount of innate creativity. So for you to actually create this from nothing, 
you had that natural ability, like you said, but you've never, you didn't explore it. Maybe because you were a kid and you weren't ready, no life experience, mm -hmm. and not ready to sit down and actually grind it out. I mean, yeah. that's, that's hard. It is hard. And I, I did have one benefit. My mom is an artist. She's a full-time artist. Really? And has been my, most of my life. Um, and when I started writing, you know, I asked her kind of what her secret was. Uh, and she just said that she just shows up every morning in the studio and pushes paint around. And sometimes, sometimes things happen and sometimes it doesn't, but her job is just to push paint around. And so she just encouraged me just to sit there and push some words around. And it just flows. Yeah. And or it doesn't flow. It does or it doesn't. And sometimes you can't control that. But the discipline is to, to show up and keep doing it. And her artwork in, in my life um, you know, some of her most fabulous paintings, the ones that were most celebrated and won awards and were shown everywhere, were ones that she said were the most difficult to do, um, you know, that she really had to stick with it. Um, you know, sometimes you get that magic moment where it just flows and, you know, also a, a, I've done some chapters in one sitting and they're great chapters, but um, that's not the, at least for me, that's not the norm. How long was a block, uh, you know, because my husband's a writer. I mean, mm -hmm. he, 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 it's just amazing. Now, I'm the talker, he's the writer. Mm -hmm. And he says, he always tells me, he says, oh, there's a book in you there some are, Suze. And I, and I really just don't have that ability. I'm very analytical and I probably am somewhat perfectionistic where mm -hmm. I believe that when I have to write like a press release or a press piece or something, I agonize. It takes me days because I feel like I have to get it completely correct and right. And John's like, no, just write it down and go back and edit it later. Right. And do you do that kind of a thing? I do. The, the way I start um, every writing session is I start with a little prayer and whatever I'm writing about on that particular day, and it could be I'm writing about two trees, and I say, give me something true about two trees. and or whatever it is I'm writing about. And I, I write, and if it doesn't feel true, I come at it from a different angle, and a different angle, and a different angle. And I'll spend a whole morning, or a whole day sometimes, just trying to discover one true thing about whatever it is I'm writing about. Um, but that's my, my morning prayer as I l go into writing. And, and that's the hope, is that you can, you can do that. And, um, and when it does, when you find that true thing um, that you're trying to write about, it's, you know, that's what we're looking for as writers. Is that the magic? It is the magic. It really is. It's interesting you say that about the prayer because I, I, I work out every morning uh -huh. I, and I get on the elliptical and I go through this thing and I, I'm a servant. I look mm -hmm. at myself as I serve. Mm -hmm. I don't think of myself in any other way and I just sit there and I go, give me what I need to be able to do the work and continue your work mm -hmm. as a servant. Right. And this is what this is the best gift you can give me and show me and uh, lately it's changed and now it's like okay show me the people introduce me to the people bring me the people that can educate me teach me and give me skills that I don't have that I can learn and I go through this little, little mental prayer it's almost like a meditative thing and you know what the magic happens mm -hmm. every day another gift and right. it's kind of like Wow, where did that come from? Well, I know where that came from, but I'm still like, what? I'm still in awe of that little gift. And I guess when you do anything creatively, like we had Lynn Creighton on before you, and she's definitely gifted. I mean, she her work is just awesome. It's awe-inspiring. It's anybody that can have the right brain gift stuff, to me, is probably, I hold that in higher esteem than anything else because it, I'm just... I don't have it, but I, I, I just celebrate the fact that they do and how inspiring it is and how it can change people. I mean, you have the gift to change lives, mm -hmm. and you have. I mean, when I was reading your book about Tim, it's Tim Garrity, a friend, uh, our friend, that Roger's business partner, lifetime childhood friend that was killed in a very tragic accident, what, 12 years ago? About did 12 you? years ago, yeah. It, it was such a shock to the community. And I mean, Tim was beloved by everyone. I don't think he had an enemy, really. I mean, mm. he was just, he was pure of soul, pure of heart. And a lot of us, including his own family, will never get over the shock of that, and it's been 12 years. I don't think, I'll, I talked to Tim. 
And I sit there and I go, Tim, come on, help me out here, man. I'm floundering. But it's he that your book made so uh, your book is like one of the favorite pieces that I own because of that, and because you you it was so true, it was so honest, and you opened your soul to that book. Your next book I have not read. I'm embarrassed to say, but I'm dying to read it because it's it was travels with your kids. It's travels with my kids and travels with. Really, it's about um, just the relationships in general, the people we travel with. Um, oh. And so I started off writing a lot about um, my, my favorite fishing holes, you know, a place I go in Montana or wherever I love to fish. And what I found was true about that. It wasn't necessarily the fishing. It was what the fishing, fishing connected me to. And uh, most of the time, it's in my, nowadays, it's my kids. And so it became more uh, the, the, the travels kind of you know, the access into the stories, but really it's a deep dive into the relationships in our lives. Um, and then, Wow, yeah, you really went deep on this one, huh? It was fun. Yeah, it was really neat. And, and I wanted to explore this idea. I had this kind of concept that, you know, the we live in a very beautiful place and we're lucky to live here and there's so much beauty still. It, it, you know, we have to f continue to fight for that and pr to protect it, but there's still so much beauty. I felt like it had been a gift to us. It's one of those gifts and left really to shape still the, con uh, it's not a passive shaping, but it's an active shaping of our character. And so when I'm in Glacier National Park, um, I was there a few years ago and I was thinking about, I was struggling with an aspect of fatherhood, feeling kind of incomplete as a father. Um, and I just sat and an old Psalm came to mind. It says, look to the mountains and ask where your help will come from. And it was just a moment where um, I did exactly that and I tapped into something that was so big um, that that gap between what I wanted for my kids you know and what they were going to get I, I could feel that shrinking and I just grabbed my sons um, and I didn't even say anything I just pointed them to the mountains and just said just look at this just take this in well that's the gift of this sure. this, this creation that we get to to enjoy and and so that's the kind of the backbone of the book is moments like that um, where I might have been there for to surf or to fish or to do something else, but really what happened is I was spoken to and usually with someone special in my life. So that's essentially what the book is. And there's a lot of really fun, there is fun adventure in it too, so it's not all, you know, these big, big ideas and stuff. There's some really great, just simple, fun stories and adventure as well. I follow you on Facebook. I, I, I'm, I don't know if you know that, but I do. Because this past summer, didn't you take the boys with you on a road trip? We did. It was a, a kind of a combination book tour and road trip. And so I'm trying to, the stage of life I'm in now, my boys are both in Cabrillo. So I've, I've got oh two. Oh my God, they're that old? Yeah, it's crazy. <gasps> and so um, my wife and I, you know, as we're kind of in this stage of life, which is awesome, um, we want to include the boys in what we do as much as we can, obviously. And as you know, as a dad, as I'm trying to work and figure out how to do that, I thought, well, this would be a great opportunity to take the kids and build this big road trip, and they can be a part of it, and they can see kind of the outcome of my work, which is, you know, discussions, book discussions, and places throughout the country. And I put them in charge of selling the merchandise. I, oh, how cool! I, I gave them a commission, so they were little hustlers the whole trip. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. And we spent the whole summer and exploring the West, and um, but you know, speaking in, um, of course, bookstores throughout the country, and then um, a lot of churches, a lot of I spoke in a lot of breweries and public spaces, and kind of a wide variety of venues. And my boys just got to see all of that. They got to see the impact of the written word on this world. And they got uh, to see Dad. They got to see me doing my thing, and they got to be a part of it. You know. And that this was is a like real gift. the trip of a lifetime. You yeah. gave them something that kids don't get. I mean, they, you know, the nuclear family here in America is dad mm -hmm. goes to work, he comes right. home for dinner, dad sits around, watches TV, passes out on the couch or the recliner, and that's yeah. the end of the day. Yeah, I've, I've found that most, it feels like most forces in the world try to separate us from the ones that we love most. And that's it's a good a comment. And it's a really, you have to fight hard to, to regain that. And the summer for me was that fight. It was a good fight of my family is going to be together. We traveled in a VW van for better or for worse. Um, and just that physical proximity to one another for that length of time 
You can't help but talk. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you talk, you fight, you have fun, you get bored, you do all the things that make us human. And we get to do that together and you start building. For me, um, it's building a culture and within my family. It's uh, a lifetime of memory that yeah. you created in a very short period of time. Yep. What gave you the idea to just go on the road with the kids? Yeah, you know, I've, I just, I mean, part of it is I just love to do, I love the travel part, but, you know, some of it was just thinking about the, the, the age, the, how quickly this time is going with yeah, them. Yeah, they go away so fast. And I just hear that over and over again, and everyone tells me just how, I hear mostly, unfortunately, of people's regrets of the things they didn't do. Didn't do, that and, the things um, they did do. Yeah, exactly, and I used that line actually in the book, and I was like, well, I'm just going to live this, and what does this look like yeah. to do that? And I cast aside a lot of things and even my own fears about what would happen to, you know, because I have to make a living somehow yeah. and like, how do you take the time off? How do you do all these things? And we're like, you know, it's just those fears aren't worth no. missing out on this opportunity to do this with with my boys and my wife. And so we, oh, we had the adventure. Melissa went too? Oh yeah, the whole, and our dog. Oh my. Yeah, <laughs> we had the whole the clan. The dog did yeah. too? Yep. So we had the whole clan. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just the boys. I guess I didn't really read the Facebook yeah. posts. That <laughs> well, she's the one mostly taking the pictures, so you never see her in them. Yeah. Oh, that's why you're not in the pictures. Yeah. She's not in the pictures. And she teaches high school? She's she a substitute did. teacher. Okay. And so she's teaching um, mostly, she's done some high school, but largely middle school and uh, grade school. Okay. She's most, I think, can keep an eye on where my kids are. <laughs> you know, You've got to re it's a unique relationship you have mm -hmm. with the kids. I oh, mean, yeah. in your family. I mean, you're so blessed to have this. Mm -hmm. And you, it, what the bigger blessing is that you realize this and you actually enacted on it. Mm -hmm. Most people would not take that. That's, that's courageous to me. That's right. a challenge. I mean, you know, and how old are the kids? Oh, they're 12 and 14 now. Oh, best of luck with two teenagers <laughs> for a whole summer. But right. you're, you've got good kids, yeah. and you've got a tight family unit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I mean, I, my, my granddaughter, she's, what is she, 12? She's the youngest granddaughter. I mean, I, spending a summer with her in a car, a little tough. But maybe, you know, it's an opportunity to change a dynamic, too. Mm -hmm. And to get that family unit together. Right. Yeah, I, I, I kind of see a little bit of my role with them as giving them better options than what they could find on their own. And so, Oh, the, absolutely. In today's yeah, world? Right, <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, you, you go on the road like this and you're like, and, you know, and you're given the option to, we fish a lot, we fly fished, we surfed, we hiked, we did, I mean, we were really active doing these things. And then to give them the sense of wonder about life, it's like these are options for you in life, they're available for you. We're doing them now. You taught and them get, economy. Yeah, and we yeah we talked all that. They were selling books. Yeah, they were yeah. making money. Yeah, they were doing fantastic. I think they made more money than I did on the trip. See that that's again a unique perspective mm -hmm. by able to give them these life lessons at this age. I mean, these are things that are going to shape their rest of their lives. The yeah. world as an adult. Right. That is very unusual. Yeah, I think I probably have a tendency, I had a tendency to probably underestimate what they were capable of. And over the summer, I got to know that they're capable of a lot more than what I would have. And their little personalities are forming now. Uh -huh. This You got them at the perfect time. Yeah. Because, you know, but your, your family's unique anyway. But, the, you know, looking at teenagers in general, parents don't really interact with their kids all that much anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody's out there hustling and trying to make a buck and trying to do whatever they're doing. Right. And then you come around a full circle, like my daughter who's 49. I talk to her just about every single day. She's a hoot. And I just look at her and I go, it's amazing how she turned out mm -hmm. in spite of me. <laughs> because I, you know, I, I think I was a good mom, but I was a very, I was a strict mom. And they, but that she reminds me of too. She goes, boy, you were hard on us. And I think, well, I was a single parent and I felt like I was, I felt unnaturally that I had to be a mom and a dad. Right. And that I probably carried it way too far. But now we laugh at some of the things that happen. Mm -hmm. But now she, you know, she's a grandmother. And mm -hmm. I look at her and it's like, my daughter's a grandmother? You know, it, it, it's just reflecting back at the way you raise your kids and how they turn out. You know, it's potluck, but the more, I always thought the more you invest in them, the better they're gonna turn out. And I think it is an investment. Oh, absolutely. It's, and most people don't 
think that way, I guess. It's just like, oh, we got to get through these teenage years and get them out of the house. Right. I never really thought that. Yeah, I was, I was talking to a, a father recently who was struggling a little bit with his kids, and they're asking about this investment thing. And there's that whole concept. I can't remember the, the book, that was, but the, the 10,000 hours concept, like anything you really want to be good at requires 10,000 hours an of concept. investment. And, you know, and, and guys I know will apply that to their work life, to their hobbies. Um, but if you want to be a good father, if you want the relationship, if you want your kids to, to turn out to be productive members of this society, you know, it takes time and effort. And How'd and you that, get so smart so young? <laughs> Do you have yeah. good role modeling? Well, you, you know, you got to remember, I didn't, my, my dad passed away when I was young, so I spent yes. a lot of time right. trying to, to figure this stuff out. Um, and I had a single mom, I was raised by a single mom, and the the limitations that we had kind of growing up with, with that. And so when I got to a certain age where we were starting to have kids and all that, I just, I spent a lot of time thinking about this. And some of it's probably a healing process for me to get an opportunity to, to kind of redo the things maybe that I didn't get when I was a kid. Um, and so, so you made the conscious investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just, because you have an introspection that most people don't. I know you well enough to be able to say that. Most people don't have that kind of introspection. They don't really go that deep because it's very, very frightening. That's, yeah, it's tough. You're, but it is very tough because these are life lessons. But if you keep on going deeper and deeper, you find out it really isn't that scary. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to kill you. Right. And it, the best that can happen is probably you're going to grow from it and your kids will benefit for it, mm -hmm. you know, this, uh, this growth period. I think we continue to grow as people. I mean, if you have the least bit of anything on the ball, you'll continue to grow as a person right. and not just look at like, oh, I got to get up at four o'clock tomorrow morning and just slog it out and look mm -hmm. forward to the weekend. That's not living to me. No. And that's not creative to me. And that's not, that's like barely breathing. Right. Then why? You yeah. know, what are you missing in your life? There's something missing in your life if that's what you're doing. Yeah. How do you get that back? Yeah. I, that, you got it back? Yeah. And I know, I mean, I've, I've learned some of this from you, but I know you're an, such an advocate for lifelong learning. And this summer, we actually, uh, I, my kids and I decided we're going to try to learn something new together. Fantastic. Um, and that's becoming now, hopefully, will become a pattern because um, now I've seen the fruits of it. It's just a, a, a little thing where, well, we, was tying flies for fly fishing, yeah. like, you know, something real simple. And uh, we're up at a place in Montana and we got a lesson on it. And we're like, hey, this is something we could learn together. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. And my kids are, you know, they're on YouTube figuring this stuff out way faster than I am. And they're teaching me how to do certain Isn't knots. Isn't that great to learn things. from your kids? Yeah, it's just great. And then I, they I get love to, that too. And they get to be in that role too. And so, um, but yeah, I think that, you know, the commitment to that learning uh, not only individually, but in, in the community as well. And in, in this case, in the community of, our, of my family. But I think that's very much a, a key to success in life. You just hit upon one of my favorite subjects, and you just mentioned it. It's the continuum, yes, but it's the community at large, because we reside in this. It, right. It's only 110,000 population. But the community, by giving back, by serving, mm -hmm. by not being selfish with your time, and right. by you know, sharing what you know and your gifts. I love the idea of sharing gifts. And I mean, you've always shared your gifts with me and I'm always, I'm in awe of what you do because I just know your heart. I've got a certain gift where I can see hearts. I mean, that sounds a little goofy, but <laughs> I, I'm very good at that. I, maybe it's just age, maybe it's just cumulative age, but it's, I can see what people's motives are really easily. It's. I guess some people refer to it as like an aura thing, but to me it's just like I can zero in on you and I can see and share your heart. And it's just, it just makes sense to me to be able to do that for the greater community. And you do that because you're sharing your life through your works. Mm -hmm. and, but the most, and your works are beautiful, but I'm most entranced by the way you share your life with your kids. That's, I'm so impressed with that because that's an investment that they will share with future generations. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, and I, I certainly hope that they do. That you know they my, will. Yeah, that would be a, 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 my best achievement. It is your best achievement when you look at your kids 
And when they get to be adults, you look at them, and I look at my daughter and go, wow, you know, in spite of me, she turned out pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it's just, it's a greater community. And by your books, where do we, by the way, where do we buy your books? Um, well, fortunately, everywhere. Um, like, where is everywhere? This, you got them I mean, on Amazon? They're on Amazon. They're in okay. Barnes Noble. They're in um, the my recent, the Recip on Stars is uh, essentially in every bookstore in the country right now, which is... Roger, Yeah, I know, right? We, Dude! Um, I signed it with Random House, and they've just been really good to me. And so that's, yeah, so it's uh, it's everywhere. That, that was really fun, too, for the boys to show up in all these random places and just find my book on bookshelves everywhere. They, they got to where if it was like on the spine, they would like go and take it out and put it out like this. And, oh, how cute. Yeah. Yeah. Entrepreneurial. Right, that's right. And they're economics now. Yeah. <laughs> I am so lucky and I'm so blessed to have you in my life. I mean, I don't get to see you often enough, but every time I do, I'm just so grateful that you've enhanced my life as well. You don't know that, but you have. Well, thank you. You're a very special person. So uh, when you write your next book, you're coming back? I'd love to. Okay, you're on. Permanent, okay. permanent guest. That's right. We're very lucky to have Roger in our community by his giving back and his huge heart. And the lessons he teaches his sons, but the lessons he teaches all of us in how to live a good life. So thanks for coming. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks for being with us.